We're back to Cougar Pods. I'm your host, Michael Dawes. We're talking with Barton Criminal Justice Instructor Andy Smith. And uh, before we went on break, we were talking about the shoot, don't shoot simulator. And Randy's trying to uh, get some donations. This is a $36,000 piece of equipment, but it will help train law enforcement across the board when we think about our seven county service area uh, to be able to go in and, and put some scenarios together of things you hope that don't ever happen, but you know there's always a chance that something could happen and you want to be prepared when that happens. Um, Randy, again, your phone number, because we are going to be going on break, if somebody's interested in at least just finding out more information about getting involved with this uh, purchase. 620-792-9564. Okay, and you can also find out information on Barton's website at bartonccc.edu. Uh, go to uh, community and, and get into that pod and, and go to our foundation and there will be information about the simulator there as well. It's about some real world experience too and that's what you do so well with uh, uh, these 40 students that you have and maybe that's what's attracted them to your program because they get the theory and the in-class stuff and the simulation but you get them out there riding in vehicles, being part of whether it be the sheriff's department, the police forces, uh, KBI, I mean, you name it, you've had people in different parts of law enforcement involved. Well, what makes it nice, Mike, is that myself being an instructor and then my two, I've got uh, a KBI chemist and a KBI uh, investigator that also teaches CSI class uh, on Monday nights. I've got a Kansas Highway Patrol trooper that actually teaches police firearms and police defense tactics. Uh, we're all certified. We all have, we go, we do this, then we go back out there. I mean, it's like uh, the scenario training uh, here, I think it was the 14th of November, out here on the campus, we joined uh, the nursing program, we joined with EMS, and we got to go out and do scenario-based right here on campus. We. They followed ambulances, they interviewed people, we had witnesses, they photographed crime scenes. I mean, it's hands-on, real experience. And with my students not knowing who the other players were, it made it real life because all of a sudden they were interviewing people they'd never talked to before. And which it, it really puts it right on the line. They have to put themselves forward and they're making those decisions just like right now, I'm here, what do I do? You know, I talked to uh, three of your students several years ago. They were getting ready to graduate and already had jobs in the field. And one of the things they told me, which still sticks in my mind today, is that they were able to try out a few things in the field. I mean, say you take somebody who's got an interest somewhere and you put them right in that environment so that they really do get a handle on, is this something I want to pursue or do I want to look elsewhere within law enforcement? And you give them very uh, different scenarios and things to chase in order to know is, if this is right for me or not. I think that's very worthy of your program. To me that's important, Mike, because if you don't, if we don't do that, these students are wasting their money. I mean, I want to show them everything because they're going to deal with reality. I mean, and it's hard to deal with because you're going to deal with everybody else's problems and then you have to go home to your own. Law enforcement's a family. You'll have two families. You have the law enforcement family and you have your own personal family. Uh, we live it every day. Sandy and I live it because my son's uh, sergeant on the sheriff's department. His wife's a detective at the PD. And it's amazing how many times Sandy and I get called out to babysit. We're, we're on the front line to do that. So if you don't work as a family, it, it just doesn't work. Another thing I notice with you and other entities at the college is you guys recognize that it's not just in and of yourselves. For instance, the middle of November we had a EMS criminal justice combined field ops going on here at the college and I'm sure it happens in other entities as well that you're involved with because it doesn't always just happen in a vacuum where it's related to law enforcement only. No, it, 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 and we're trying to build on that because one thing about a law enforcement officer he has to know a community. He's gonna go, he's gonna be a protector of that community. He knows, he, he has to understand who's living in there, what businesses, and he has to understand how those op businesses operate. I mean, it's, they've got a lot of responsibility. 
And if we don't teach them that now, then they're kind of lost in, if they're just thrown into it. So. And it would be so easy for you just to teach the theory and give your kids seat time or your students, because we may have some that are non-traditional. But you find ways to actually get them integrated into these scenarios so that they do get a, a, a chance to feel like, well, what's, what's that about working with in a catastrophic situation where I've got more than just this one thing to deal with and I've got other aspects and other departments involved? You won't believe this, Mike, but one theory, you talk about going out and writing. Uh, one of my students uh, last semester, or this semester, had the chance of going riding with a highway patrol. And it was kind of amazing because he didn't get home till three o'clock the next morning they had a fatality. So it's something that a lot of officers never get to see. And he was amazed that me and the trooper kept calling him over the weekend because it was Easter break, and kept calling him and say how he was because we didn't know how he would handle that type of situation. So, and then we had another one get involved in a meth lab. The other, another one got involved in a high speed chase. Uh, these are the things they get to see. And they're amazed how many officers can multitask while they're trying to do what they're doing, plus take care of them. Okay. Well, Randy, uh, that concludes our show. It's been an honor to talk to you and actually fun. I always enjoy getting around your students and seeing how you operate uh, that real world experience. And, and, you know, they seem so energetic to, to go out there in the field and do what you're teaching them. So thanks for joining us. Welcome. Hey, this is uh, Michael Dawes, your host, saying so long for Cougar Paws. Mm -hmm.